Well, good evening. Uh, this is just uh, another piece of uh, a kit that I picked up uh, uh, cheaply in an auction here. This is a, a non-working uh, 8672A. And um, uh, I know it's not working because uh, when I flip it on to turn on, ignore this side, just look here at the frequency, and we've got a frequency set here, uh, 33, 33.33, and it doesn't uh, react to the uh, to the tuning control at all. So uh, clearly, there's something wrong uh, with this side of the the system here. Now, what the 8672A uh, is is a signal, synthesized signal generator, and it goes from uh, two gigahertz up to 18 gigahertz. So it's a perfect companion uh, for a generator like my uh, 8657B that uh, goes from zero to about two gigs. Uh, this guy does uh, pretty much the same sort of thing. It has a, um, a wide output level uh, range. Um, we have an ability to uh, control how um, uh, type of modulation we're getting. Are we getting AM, FM modulation? We can uh, input the uh, uh, some signals to control the modulation there. We can then uh, uh, set our uh, um, output frequency and get uh, a signal uh, and set that uh, at, uh, quite reasonable uh, ratios uh, between there. So now if you uh, look over here you might have noticed originally that uh, uh, I had a, a little light saying the oven was cold. These have an oven controlled oscillator in here so uh, now that it's been connected in the oven itself has warmed up and if we turn it on what we can see uh, on the range over here is that uh, little bit of gunk there um, might be a little bit of actual uh, problem thing. This we, you know, we ha can have the ability to control uh, the ranges, and so the range control here of the attenuator is basically working. You know, we can see that uh, uh, the ALC is on the internal, which we'd expect. Uh, unleveled uh, is telling us that uh, you were not having a signal put out, so it's not uh, leveling properly. You know, we can change. That we can turn on AM FM. You know, basically over here, the system reacts as I would expect uh, it to react. It's this side here. We get some of the little uh, frequency resolution controls. You know that uh, uh, control how we're going to do that. We can hit preset. But we're not changing this, and we're staying with out of range and unphased lock. So, what uh, uh, the first step to do is to go through is to uh, check the uh, the power level. So let's uh, turn this off and go do that. All right. So here we go. Uh, I've taken the top off the the unit here and uh, uh, gone through the uh, the instruction manual or looked at the initial service manual. And started the the process of uh, of working through the troubleshooting. So the first thing that it tells you to do, and I'm going to try and move the unit into a bit further, closer into shot, is to come up here and measure the values that uh, uh, sit along uh, sit along that uh, uh, A3 A3 board just here. So let me. Just pause for a moment, and I'll grab the piece of paper that I uh, have the uh, the values on. Okay, here we are. Given that I was woefully unprepared uh, to start the video, let's uh, zoom in a bit, and you can see here. And this is the power supply adjustments that we go down the test points on A3, A3, uh, and we measure for basically uh, an 11 volt, uh, 5.2, 5.2. 10 and a 40 um, volt uh, rails. Actually, you can hear you see plus. Yep. You can see the rails listed here: plus 20, plus 52, minus 52, minus 10, minus 40. So, um, what uh, the first thing that we're going to go do is start uh, working our way uh, through this. Now, uh, the first step it says is to go and look at uh, A3, A2 test point one. And measure that for 22 volts and uh, I've measured that already and it is in fact uh, 22 volts so now uh, what we're going to go do 
is let's zoom this out a little bit. Let's see if I can move this across without dropping a bunch of stuff onto the floor. Let's maybe move the camera a little and then zoom in. Let's see if we can get... There we go. This is going to be a little, little bit of an angle, but you should still be able to see it. So we're going to start here and we're going to measure our uh, voltages and see how we, uh, we go. So let me just plug in my item here and let me plug the, the device in. Okay, now the way this thing uh, works is that there's a bunch of stuff that is uh, always on. Uh, because it uh, warms the oven and things like that, but this board here, I'm going to have to uh, to turn the. Uh, actually, I don't know. I think uh, it may actually be on as well. Let me just check. Yeah, some of the lines, some of the lines are on, uh, but the board itself isn't. So let's just turn it on. And you can see that the some of the lights have come on. So let's start working our way through the, the table here. Uh, the first one to check is A3, A3, test point 6. And so that should be the plus 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we go in here and put on this guy here, I'm getting 11.17. Uh, uh, and it should be between 9.9 .9 and 12.1. So that one's good. So then uh, the 5.21, which is this guy here, and it's 5.20, which is bang in the middle of the 5.1, 5.3. The next one is the minus, and it's on the next board up, and it's this guy up here. So you can see him here, so let's go measure him. And minus 5.17. And it should be between minus 5.1 and minus 5.3, so that's good. So the next one is uh, the minus 10 volt rail, which is A3, A4, test point 4. So it's this guy here, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we come in here and we get that, we get minus 9.93. And it says as long as it's between minus 9.8 and 10 point, minus 10.2, that's good. So that's okay. So now let's do the last one, which is the minus 40. And here on minus 40, I'm reading minus 0.53 volts. So there's clearly something wrong in our minus 40 rail. So with that, what it tells you, let me zoom this back out. What it tells you to do is to go and start having a look at uh, service sheet what is it? Service sheet 11-A3, which is this guy here. And let's get, let's get some light in here so you can see what's going on. Okay. So let's zoom that in. You know, so basically what it tells you to go do is have a look at this assembly here which is that A3, A2 card and then go check the pins uh, that are on it. So let me take the power out because that card is always live. So we need to wait until um, we need to wait until the actual let me get that. We need to wait until the power has gone and then if we zoom back out a little bit you can see that uh, I'm over here and it's this card here and I don't know if I can get it it's this guy here so let's pull this guy out and here's the card now you can see that I've already done a little bit of stuff here I've just wired in uh, two test wires now the reason I've done this is you're actually supposed to put this on uh, an extender card and then the extender card plugs in and you can have it out here and, and use it uh, of course I don't have an extender card because you know it's rare to get extender cards with this old kit but if we look here at, let me show you the, 
if you show if I show you the the lines here that it says to go have a look at you'll see that it lists a set of voltages and so the only one that can be regulated down let me zoom in there the only one that can be regulated down is really the one that's on positive pin 3 and negative pin 1 uh, which is 48 to 60 and that can be regulated down to uh, 40 uh, volts. Now it's rare they took a lower voltage and, and regulated it up so with that what we can do is flip over to the schematic and now when we have a look at the actual schematic what we can do is start looking around here and looking at this little uh, assembly here and these are the assemblies that basically are the board that this thing plugs into and so if we go look for pins 1 and 3 what do we find? Let me go zoom in over here but if we look for pins 1 and 3 over here um, what you'll see here is that it is the 40 to 60 volt DC and that it is going to be adjusted down to the minus 40 volt on regulated and the minus 40 return so that is going to be where we're going to get our minus uh, 40 volts from so if we have a look uh, let me take a quick look at what note 3 says because I didn't actually uh, read note 3 but note 3, I have to put my glass on use volt voltmeter with a float in common to be able to uh, uh, read that now that's going to be a little hard because I don't actually have a voltmeter with a floating uh, common but uh, we know that yeah I should still be able to read those values even without using the, the floating common um, think I can read those values. Alright, well anyway let's keep going so that's why I tacked uh, uh, this couple of lines on here and if you can see the couple of lines on here under pins 1 and 2 and they're horribly tacked on there but you know I was just doing it quickly because I wanted to take this video and just do a quick test before I moved on to something else and so now let me see if I can get this this guy into its slot here. There we go. And so now I'll put So now let's turn the, let's plug this in. Okay, uh, if we zoom this out, you can see that the little LEDs come on. And it's telling me that I'm reading, uh, that I'm getting my 22 volt uh, line and that's working. And so if I connect to this wire here, I'm reading 57 volts so I'm getting power coming out of the regulator coming onto that board so now the next culprit to look at is what is in uh, uh, the A3, A4 board okay so the next step uh, that I want to do is to go and have a look at this board here so I've disconnected the power cover because remember that a lot of this stuff stays live and we want to take this guy out. I want to take this guy out here and take a, a quick look at it. Now, um, if you look at like the board here, uh, let me zoom in a little. If you look at the board here, and sorry about this angle, I've ordered a wide lens so I can get more of my bench. We'll see what happens when I get that. Um, one of the things that it says to do is to check the fuses. Now, uh, looking at the schematic, fuse 2 here is going to be the one that's going to go uh, through so let me take my all right but 
let, let's check the other fuse. Yep, we're good there. Let's check this guy. Aha. Uh -huh. There's our culprit. Now, well, there's our culprit for why it's not working now. Remember that there could be a reason that the fuse blew, and it may have blown, uh, you know, it may have blown for some reason other than, uh, you know, just the fuse itself deciding to give up the ghost. So, what uh, this fuse is, is a 1.5 volt, 250, 1.5 amp, 250 volt fuse. Now, I don't happen to have one of those, but what I do have is a 2 amp, 250 volt fuse. So, normally I would be hesitant to put something in that wasn't the right amperage, uh, because there's a reason that we want to see, like the reason that they put that in there is to stop you know, if they wanted a 2 amp fuse, they would have spec'd a 2 amp fuse. But, for a short period, where we'll drop this in, you know, plug everything back in, see if I get a 40 volt rail, or if the, and see if that changes the front panel. So, fingers crossed, let's drop this in. Right, let me now go and measure the unregulated uh, points because the, the, they should still be giving unregulated voltage. Yep. So let me turn this guy on. Oh, and now I'm measuring minus one volt. Okay. So, even though that fuse blew, oh, this is a fantastic video. Let's zoom out. Um, even though that fuse blew, it didn't seem to really have anything to do with the lack of voltage there so hang on so we normally it says we should normally getting you know normally if we go and take um, you know the unregulated voltage is 53 this is minus one but the, we should be seeing you know, about 54 typically, so we're seeing that across there, we're just not seeing the minus 40 appear. Okay, well, time to pull the circuit and uh, take a deeper look at uh, exactly what's uh, going on there. So, <clears throat> three, two, three, two, one. So I was lying in bed just thinking about this, and it, uh, you know, occurred to me looking at the schematic here that, it, you know, I can pass um, the minus forty volt uh, rail just straight in off the actual pin. And so, what I can do is I can get my bench, my lab power supply, hook it up, and just actually drive the, the 40 volt rail uh, off the power supply and see if that's actually the, the problem. So, I looked a little deeper into the schematic here, and um, it's, uh, it's about 2 in the morning, so forgive me if the, this has gone a little rogue. Um, but I, I looked a bit deeper into the schematic, and what I realized I could do was to, let's zoom this out, was to in this thing here, we have a, a, a ground pin and the 40 volt pins here. So if I turn on my meter, 
and then go to as soon as it boots up to go to connectivity I should be able to check the chassis ground and see if this ground actually meets it and it does so that's we're getting chassis ground there so if I switch back over to my voltage now and I measure the unregulated because remember this power supply is live all the time because it's heating up that uh, I think I'm getting 58 volts uh, across the chassis ground so I should just be able to take uh, some lines from my um, from my bench top power supply and uh, drop them in. So let's see, minus so I the minus 40 goes there, and the plus goes to the ground, and so now my lab power supply should be referenced to the ground that's here and providing minus 40 volts. Now I have to gang. Because uh, if you listen to some of my other videos, you know I have a DP832, which is uh, 30 volt per channel. So I have to gang the, the channels together. That gives me uh, uh, up to 60 volts. So I have the channels gang to 2020 20, and about uh, 750 milliamp each. So they should be uh, uh, more than enough to drive uh, uh, the circuit um, there. So let's turn uh, this guy on. Let's turn on my channels. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get it across there. And now, can we zoom in? We're going to have to undo some of the things. But if you zoom, if we zoom right in, and you might be able to. You can just barely see, just over the side here, the reflection from CR15 there, which is uh, uh, actually showing the, uh, you know, showing that the, the 40 volt rail now has some stuff in there. So let's go back and have a look at the front panel. Bugger me if the front panel doesn't seem to work. Let me shift the camera around so that we can take a look at that. Okay, so sorry about the angle on this, but this thing is an enormous piece of kit. And so I'm trying to get out of the light that I have on the front so we can see what's going on here. But remember how when we first looked at it, this was stuck up here? Now it actually responds to the frequency tuning. And so as I go through, I can set the individual things. Now, they're horrible. They just need to be taken out and cleaned. Um, you know, if I go reset, it'll take it back. Let me run that. You know, I can run that up to five or six meg. Let's push hold there. So now it's it's locked that in. But step back. So our unit's actually in it. So it, it, to me, it does look like that 40 uh, volt uh, line and rail was really the problem and if I look at my uh, if I look at my uh, um, you know if I look at the uh, uh, the power that's being supplied by my bench uh, meter I'm getting about 357 milliamps uh, showing up on both channels which is what one would expect uh, seeing that they're ganged together so you know I don't know what, um, we'll have to go and you know, dig into that card, but let's see if the, the unit is actually working here. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually have a counter that can go uh, high enough to uh, uh, read more than three uh, uh, gigahertz. In fact, uh, I have a little, uh, have a little, um, uh, 50, 53131A that has the channel 3 um, output, the uh, channel 3 on it that can go uh, 1.5 to 3 gigahertz. Now I have the 3 gigahertz option in there so I can measure at least some of this uh, uh, very accurately. So now from reading the manual if I leave, if I turn output on we should see a bunch of these enunciators go away. 
and yes we do we're on the we're getting leveled output now and the phase lock has uh, turned off so now we're outputting you know a minus 110 um, uh, minus 110 actually minus 110 would be the zero here so we're putting out like a minus 120 dBm signal so let's turn that and look at that we've got that working so let's take that to about zero and now let's step this up to about 20 dB and now my counter should be able to read that and so forgive me for the bouncing this around but there you go on my counter that's uh, externally referenced to my uh, GPSDO and it's 2.999999989 so that's 2 gigs with um, you know some a uh, hundred millihertz, a couple hundred millihertz of, uh, of offset from a two gig uh, signal. So overall, uh, that's pretty damn good for for this uh, for this system. Now, uh, this thing works in by having sort of three multiplied by three ranges, as far as I'm uh, I'm aware. So you know that little miss here will go as it goes up to eighteen gigahertz, but that's that now let me throw another meter on here uh, that I have which is an RF power meter and uh, let's set this to 0 dB and now put my RF power meter on there so if you bear with me I'll just go set that up okay so there we go hopefully we'll be able to, to see this um, what we could do is just go in and zero uh, the device right now and this is an E9301A uh, uh, sensor so it actually only goes up to 6 gigahertz uh, but it will read from uh, minus 60 I think up to plus 20 so we're doing a little zero there alright so we're zeroed so now we'll cal it and that's uh, aligning it to the very accurate interior uh, power reference that's over here and so that's uh, going to get a nice, good reference on this. So let's take this off now. And we will turn the RF off on the unit. And you can see that unleveled has just let back in. So it's saying that because the RF's off, it can't actually level the... Uh, So let's get this on. Okay, so we got that on. So now let's turn it on. And there you're seeing is about 0.2 dBm off. Now I'm not quite aligned. If I change that vernier, I can, you know, probably dial that down a little bit. There we go. Very close to to 0 dB there, if I just give it a little tweak well my way, that's about as close as I can get on that sort of vernier um, let's uh, step this range down, so if we go down by this thing, it should take us down by 10 you know, so we're 10 there 20 yep, yeah, 30 We'll settle into minus 40, let's give it a, well, we'll settle down to minus 50 there at some point, hopefully. So, minus 60, hmm. Okay, so we might also have some attenuator, attenuator issues uh, there as well. So let's turn that right down. Oh, set the frequency here to be uh, 
that makes sense if I actually set the frequency on this to be correct. There we go. So minus 60 there, so let's turn it back up. It's going to jump around, I guess, as it finds uh, its level and then eventually will settle back down. Uh, I'm assuming if we leave it long enough that uh, the, AS, the automatic level control will eventually get it back. I mean, you see it's hitting 50 every now and then, so... I don't know, maybe 50, maybe there might be something wrong with, you know, that sort of range. But if we go up again to 30, you know, and I've turned it down, so if we turn it back up to zero, you know, you can see that it's about 30. You know, about minus 40. Yeah, it looks like we might have a little bit of an attenuator issue down in that area as well, but if we go up to 10, to 0, we go to plus 10, which is its max, and then take that all the way, so we're maxing out at sort of 12.8. So, what I would have to do now is uh, uh, go and actually check the uh, modulation um, of this, but... Uh, Again, at 3 gigahertz, I don't actually have anything that can check the modulation there. Though I could take it down to 2 gigahertz, which would be its bottom uh, value. And so, um, you know, I could measure that with maybe my 8902A. But uh, anyway, uh, I think that's a major step forward. You know, now we've isolated the problem down to specifically the, you know, it really, it does look like that's that, that 40, uh, minus 40 volt uh, rail is, uh, is the issue. So we can get in and have a look at the A3, A4 board and uh, do a little bit of, uh, 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 of analysis there. Now, I can't really do much because of the way it's in there, but I've bought uh, a couple of the extenders um, for the unit. So uh, when they'll arrive, we'll do the, the next part of uh, uh, this repair and we'll, um, uh, we'll see if we can fix that, uh, that 40 volt rail. Hope you found this interesting. Catch you again.